Yeah, morning, everybody. I know, <laughs> yeah, I know you just can't wait. Uh, he's here. He's here live. You can see us on YouTube. He's here. Somehow, photographs make people look completely different from when you now get to see them. Yeah. Yes. I could have walked past him many times without knowing that he was the one I was looking for. Anyway, Mr. Aki George, Fashola, I got that right. You got absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Now, so your first name is Aki George. Yes, it is. This is the first time I'm seeing a double barrel first name. It will not be the last. It will be the last. <laughs> that means you tend to have more children. <laughs> Mr. Aki George Fashala is, of course, you know, is in charge of the VIS. That's Vehicle Inspection Service. Service. And uh, he's here to give us clarity on the on the uh, um, MOT, the MOT, especially as it concerns inspection, loads yes. of people have. So w where are we now on this? What is the situation on ground? Okay, uh, situation on ground. Well, I'm, I'm happy with the progress so far. We've had uh, slight challenges and we are fixing it as we go along. Mm. Um, so we've changed a couple of things around to try and ease the pressures at the centers. Okay. And uh, I believe what we've done will go a long way in bringing about you know, sanity at some of those centers that we've talked about. Mm. Uh, that includes, um, so you will only be seen on appointment now. Um, okay. You will not be able to just walk waltz in. We'll give you the option to choose where you want to go for your test, the time slot, and the date. Now let's let's take the process from the beginning. Yes. Okay. So my my um, MOT is due for renewal. What do I do first? Okay. So the first thing you do is go to any of the VIS center or VIO centers that you know registers vehicles for roadworthiness. Now, okay. a lot of people don't do that. They send their agents or their proxies or whatever. The process is still the same. Whoever it is you want to send, go and make sure that you tell them the date and time and location that you want to do your test. You before you pay. Before you pay. Or even mm. after you pay. It doesn't matter. Th they need to know where you want to do the test. So, if you don't know, um, all those centers that are currently available are on our website. You can go there, look at them, see the one that's closest to you, pick where you want to go. Mm -hmm. They will give you a time slot that is available. If well, what is the website, please? Okay, so it is uh, dvis. Yes. Yes. Uh, lg. Gov. Ng. Okay. Dvis. Dot L lg dot lg dot gov dot gov dot ng dot, okay so fine. you go there you you see all the available centers now when you go there um you can pick the center and the time slots in which you want to do your testing if it is full on the day you want it they will give you another day so what that means is the particular date and center that you've picked and the time slot, they are waiting for you on that particular day and, mm. and, and date. So it's not a matter of you just going there and, okay, I'm in line. No, they, you are expected at that center. And if you are not on the list of people that are expected, then the, the onus is on the zona head at that particular center to see if they can accommodate you. Okay, if they cannot accommodate you, they will recommend where you can go, where it is free for you to do it instantly. Okay, so now if I'm given a 9 o'clock appointment, yes, I'll be seen within at 9. You will be seen between 9 and 10. Okay, that's the time slot. That's what we've done. Oh, okay, so I've seen so we're, 9 we're, and so, 10. Yeah, so we're giving allowances for variation in terms mm -hmm. of... Fair enough. Yeah. Because why I say so is that, that had, look, if you saw my inbox, series of complaints, people who say they have sent their drivers since 5 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, Mr. Tissi, that's, that's a little bit dangerous and an over-exaggeration. Why would you send someone to somewhere that it's not even open till 8 o'clock? Well, they, they believe, they believe, you might say it's an exaggeration, but they believe that, um, and that was what I think you had in the past, that yes. it had like to be at the top of the queue. It's a Nigerian factor. I mean, it, it happens I, I, if, if once it gets competitive. But I think with this appointment now, yes, I, I hope that it would get better. No, it, it absolutely get better. And uh, to to be more enlightened on that, so the first week in February, which is uh, from Monday mm. till the fourteenth, okay, that's a free 
zone. So we're not taking appointments for that just to clear the backlog of what is currently available of people that but we're How giving. do you register to be seen anyway? Um, see. You just... You can just drive like it. I said, the, the the process is not different from what you used to do before. Mm -hmm. So once you go and apply for your roadworthiness certificate, they at that present time they will give you a time, a center, and a a, a date. That uh, that's it. Mm. Right. And has that been working well so far? The appointments has been working, but it will not come into play until after the fourteenth. Oh, I see. Because I'm, we are using the 1st of February to the 14th of February to, to clear, clear the, the backlogs backlog. of what we have. And we can cover that in, in a span of two weeks. The backlog that you have, are they registered vehicles? What I mean by registered vehicles is, do you have them registered? Yes, we have them. They oh, are, okay. the, the, they've already been issued a, a referral note and um, they're just waiting to be seen. When are you going to start checking compliance? Because it looks as if some people believe that is on. <laughs> okay, so that's a good question. Um, the compliance or the way we envision compliance to be done is, is twofold. One, you know, you're very aware that Lagos State Government has cameras fixed around the state now. Mm -hmm. So uh, the cameras and the technology that Mr. Governor has afforded us will allow us to now pinpoint who we are after. So now I know from the register who I have issued roadworthiness certificate to who has come for testing and then so we want to take the guessing game out of enforcement so i want to eliminate that notion where random checking so i i know specifically who i'm looking for you know you pass in front of the camera it alerts the officer that this guy this vehicle okay. mm -hmm. has not been tested doesn't have a certificate or this guy this vehicle does you can go your man i'm not stopping you Either you get an automatic fine ticket sent to your telephone number that you have committed an offense, or if the officers are within the vicinity, they will stop you and you know issue you the appropriate fines. Now, I've also, talking about cameras, yes. I, I've um, also had experience of people who get these random notes that you've jumped a uh, uh, you jumped a light or you know, so jumped a traffic light, yeah. things like that. Now, the problem with that, for example, in this area, is that because of the nature of the traffic here, sometimes you find that the traffic uh, personnel, the last mile personnel, override the light and try to direct traffic themselves. So you find even even in body thermos, sometimes the light is red, and then the you know, for, for reasons that are quite obvious, the traffic wardens could tell you to please keep going. How do you reconcile that? Okay, that's a good question. That's, um, that particular incident, when officers override traffic lights, yes. Okay, so they have signals that they send to the cameras, so to speak. It's all at a trunk. It cuts off the feed at that particular junction if there's a camera there. So mm. it doesn't register. That is why they do it too. But that is left at the discretion of the guy. What if he's not that efficient and, you know, uh, well, it does happen. It, it does happen. And yes. we, we look at it on a case by case basis. So, so long as you can prove the point. And, How am I going to do that? Oh, well, you know, there are a couple of ways to do that. If you can't and you say a last mile officer is there, they are registered in places where they are. So he will come forth and educate that and prove your point. I, I mean, okay, so. A, a traffic at, at 1004 Junction two weeks ago, yeah. that's my man overrides, and I'll get this. Where am I, how am I going to know who, who was there at what time? <laughs> you, you're not listening. You, you, to you, you forget that. You forget yeah. that the driver who is going wherever he is, yeah. that's where his mind is. Absolutely. Well, what I said before, if an officer overrides a light, mm. yeah, the system, if it is within that vicinity, switches off. So it will not go on. Or it will not. Yeah, but you, you could also find the, the, the what, you know. No, Mr. This what you will find is nine times out of ten, mm. those issues come into play when the cameras are on, mostly at night. It doesn't usually happen during the day because there are no officers on that particular junction at night and people run it because of security reasons. I understand oh, that. You're saying, yes. I understand that. Mm. But we will look at it on a case by case, case basis. By case it, basis. It, it is not for you to run red lights. Um, obviously, we don't want people doing that. So it, it, if the situation warrants us to take a closer look at that, we will do it. Well, listeners out there, you better do what I did. I put a dash cam in my car.
that's that solves <laughs> it solves a lot of problems it right? does it does it, it, does. So, it solves it's, a lot it, of it's problems. time and date stamped so yes y- y- yes you can so you, you can, can see yes okay I, I, look my listeners look at that they're itching to to call in zero seven hundred nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three and of course, the we have the other line zero one four six five seven one nine zero. Let me take a first caller here. <laughs> the lines are buzzing. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yeah, let me say this. How are you? Fine. Straight to the point, please. Yeah, the, the, I just I, I'm just listening to the young the man you are discussing. In the, in it's not a young man, please. Term. I don't like that kind of language here. Okay. okay. You said the, the gentleman. Okay, the gentleman. Thank you. Um, this to me looks very difficult. Mm-hmm. As I have said, I have received these messages severally, mm. and those last month people passed me yes. several locations. I never, never did traffic light. I can tell you. Yes. But you receive these messages. I don't know how they will look into this case by case. How many cases they will look into. The thing is that when you receive them, I want to renew your paper. They say they say you should come and pay fine. So yes. I don't know how they want to look at this case by case. Um, it's just something it needs to be strategic about and let us know how case by case will be handled. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I tend to agree with him. Okay, so let me let me clarify something. Yeah. Yes. The cameras are not only for you to run red lights. The cameras do a variety of things. In your instance or your own case, I would want to believe that the cameras caught your vehicle because your documentation was out of date not necessarily because you ran a red light yeah if your documentation on your vehicle is out of date the camera will issue you an an instant fine that is what i believe happened to you so if so we won't get any any fines for for running a red light i did not say that i said in his own particular case that why why is his own case peculiar because he oh, just stated now that he did not run any red light. So that leaves the option... No, what he said... Sorry to cut you Okay. Short. What he said was that sometimes the last man... It's very... It's quite common on the 1004 axis. I know that. Understandably so. For example, if there's something going on at the civic center, yeah. you know, then you need to resort to manual. I, I think that we need to make up our minds whether we want to use traffic lights all the way or would rather use manual in some areas. Okay, so l- let me answer that again. Nine times out of ten, the violations that people receive on their telephone saying that they've uh, committed a traffic offense is not necessarily for traffic lights. I just told you when oh, I see. when officers override the system, it shuts down, right? So what they are receiving nine times out of ten has to do with the documentation on that vehicle at that particular mm. time. So if you are driving and you're... Either your vehicle license, your insurance, your roadworthiness certificate, or any other vehicular documentation that you might have or that you're supposed to have has expired at any given time, and you pass in front of a camera, it'll issue you a fine. That's just it. Mm. Where, if you, if you are not happy, with the, where do you go? Absolutely. You can go to any of the 45 uh, VIS offices that we have or come to HQ to lodge your complaint. You can even lodge your complaint on the website. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's, a, there, there's, a, uh, there's a lodge your complaint that you can contest it if you can prove otherwise. For instance, if your documentation or the red light issue happens, you can contest it if you can back up your claim. You have to be, it's not mm. just hearsay. But, but wouldn't it be, why don't we make up our minds on what, what we want to do with the lights, whether we want to li- automate the system and leave it to run its course, or or manual, or that's because you see it it creates a lot of uh, it's simple because you are right there. I mean, yeah. it's all in the day's work for you. The same way you look at a doctor when you go in and you're, you're aching and you're saying motikuo motikuo, and the doctor says, "I bet my friend move fast, move fast." So it's it's it sounds simple to you. Yeah. It can become a headache for for most people. Okay, having having said that, I will take your criticism back and we will take mm. another look at it and try yes. to um, look at the best way forward. Yeah, because if you rely does. on the human factor, it could fail you. But so some t- sometimes, you have to mm. agree with me, sometimes it is absolutely necessary because the volume of traffic, the mm. light cannot contain it. Yes, yes, that's why I said, why don't we make up our minds in certain we'll, areas? We will look at that. Yes, we'll look at that. or maybe in certain times. Yes, we'll uh, look uh, at that. 
But I need your people to to look at the the VI axis. There's a lot of even this morning. How many did we see jumping lights? About two, three. Dangerously, some even jump lights and make a U-turn. You know, all kinds of things. Of course, you know, it's a commercial driver. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, are, are commercial drivers, commercial vehicles exempt? From this VIS policy, uh, uh, Mister, this is, no one is exempt from this VIS or ministry. Where did the China. story come from? I I don't know where it came from. It's just an assumption. It is not true. Um, we do the same inspection that we do for, for these damn fools. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let let's let's be fair. Yes. The way you see damn is not the way we see damn If you look at them on a cosmetic basis, they will all fail. Okay, so let's be honest with ourselves. They will all fail. It is not about cosmetic. There are certain levels of cosmetic that we will allow, but we are talking about minimum safety standards. Are your brakes effective? Can your headlight work? When you turn your trafficator or your turn signal, does it turn Most of them not get trafficator? I, 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 absolutely, absolutely. That's where the enforcement comes in. Okay, so they too go through those tests. Just because you don't see them doesn't mean they don't do it. They do it. No, what I, what, rather, my reaction to this is that um, for every eight out of ten, most of them don't even have trafficators. What? They don't, most of them, to be honest with you, shouldn't be on our roads. I, I don't disagree with you. I don't yes. disagree with you. Well, yes. That's where enforcement comes in. Okay, so let me give you a, just a, a, a slight insight into how we enforce them. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I don't necessarily want them to come to the centers. As a matter of fact, it, it's not uh, it's not in the interest of Lagos State because there are that many. They will clog up the roads, and you can't contain them. So we would rather take the enforcement or the inspection to their to parks them. and garages. We do it on a constant basis, right? You go to the uh, parks and garages. Um, they have a chairman in every park and and, and and garage. Mr. Chairman, all these vehicles there, we t we have an agreed schedule. We line them up. Okay, we inspect them for minimum safety standard, brakes, headlights, uh, and and the likes of that. Do you do that for private vehicles to minimum safety? Standards? Yeah, it's the min. Ev everybody is a minimum it's safety. Minimum safety everybody is a minimum safety standard. I'm not. I'm not particularly interested in whether you drive a Lamborghini or what. It's the minimum safety standard that Lagos State has appropriated under laws, and th that's what we check for. And mm. we do it for them. A lot of them fail. So a lot of them also pass there. Okay, so you will not believe it. You can see a rickety um, downfall boss. Mm. Yeah? But when it comes to minimum safety standard, he can pass because the brakes are good, the steering is good. S some of them have tr uh, turn signals. Some of them have functional headlights pointing in the right direction. You know, the... <laughs> It's very critical. It has to point in the right direction. Right. <laughs> in the, yes, I, I need to stress that. Pointing in the right direction, not just having a headlight that is there. That It is no use if it's not pointing in the, in the right, right direction. Because <laughs> you can blind somebody. Even you that is driving it will not see the critical aspect of road infrastructure that we have laid out, and you will hit it. What? But one thing that bothers me is the lax attitude we have to public transportation. And I think it's a victim, is a child of circumstance. I would have thought that the higher premium would be on vehicles that are used for public transportation. They would, I, I, I don't know when we are going to get to that level where even the aesthetics should be at the barest minimum. Okay. That's a good question too. Okay, so I will answer that. I know you have been following Mr. Governor's um, transport policy over the past couple of years. You know, I have been following. I well, you should have. I haven't. Why? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Um, let's just talk about this. Oh, don't, oh, let oh, me, oh, don't let me oh, politics. Okay, like, because it's, because it's, you see, you see, you see, the, you brought up something now, and I need to clarify it. There's yeah. so much rhetoric in government. Yes. And at the end of the day, when it comes to, to practicalizing it, it is because of our circumstances, it's almost different. No, I, I disagree. If you follow transport policy for Mr. Governor over the last two years, you will see uh, a clear indication of where we are going. New buses, a lot more buses. Oh, in that sense, yes. In that oh, okay. sense, yes. first and last mile, the smaller buses, you've seen them around. Come yes, on. yes. We are trying to change the face of Lagos State. It's not going to happen in one day, but mm. it's a progressive thing that we ramp up as the capacity comes along. 
those vehicles you're talking about, they have to build them. It, it, it's not stored somewhere. You know, we have to build them, attain capacity, mm. and then launch them. Now, in, in the essence of phasing out the other ones that are not so conducive to our environment, mm. it will take strategic planning. And that to is get why, them up, yeah, yeah, to get them. That is why Mr. Governor is very passionate about the rail coming on. That will take a lot of pressure off the roads so we can build the necessary capacity to include the road uh, Look, transport. Okay, in this is policy. Is, I'm is, talking is, about what is on ground. Yeah, but that's uh, that is what is on I, ground. I, I, and I'm talking about, I got to take a break anyway. Okay. My, my prefect here. Yeah. You said you wanted to ask him something. You are huffing and yeah. puffing. Uh, that you are go, you must you, ask but, him. But you know I don't huff and puff. <laughs> oh, yeah, ask I, now. I, I don't. Anyway, we'll take a break. When when I come back, Sheriff will ask him what he's been dying to ask him okay. all along. We'll be right back. Stay one step ahead with the latest news and trending conversations here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Don't tell people, are you added weight? Why are you losing weight? Yeah. Are you eating? No, it's, it's not your business. That money, the pass is good. That finally. We should be patient and pray to God that God is going to answer our prayer. Yes, this is not all about prayer. It's not like it's not, it's not prayer. prayer. Yes, that is Nigerian like, you know I mean? If you're in search of that perfect place in Lagos for a photo shoot, best thing to cover your dream wedding or you just want to update that cherished family portrait and look no further face time pictures face time pictures is the leading photography studio in lagos situated right in the heart of lekki phase one our team of expert photographers provide bespoke and specialized photography with our skilled creative team and extensive knowledge you are sure to fall completely in love with the outcome of your photo shoot so what are you waiting for pre-wedding shoots wedding photographs birthday shoots headshots model portfolios corporate shoots maternity shoots, kiddies shoots, and even fashion photography. You can call or send us a WhatsApp message on 0803-192-6300 or 0703-055-3838. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at FaceTime underscore pictures. Website FaceTimePictures.com. FaceTime Pictures. Perfect picture in time. Driver, FaceTime Studio ni mo lo. Jo mag be mi koja o shomok be agbalag ba ni mi. Are you looking to expand your business to Port Hackett? Does the thought of finding an office in a new city and managing its operations give you so much stress? Do you need a comfortable and serene workspace to do business? Stress no more. Cowork NG is here for you. We've got the right offer space for as low as 20k monthly, which covers a workstation, high-speed internet, uninterrupted power, access to fully equipped boardrooms, admin support, security, and so much more. Cowork NG is the premier co-working offer space in Port Hackett, the major oil and gas hub of the nation. Since 2017, we've serviced over 300 national and international clients and understand the business of providing value to our clients for booking and inquiries. Call us on 0814-922-1669 or visit our website at www.cowork.ng. Cowork NG. Shared offices. Shared ideas. When you run your race, your body heats up, you sweat, and the longer you run and sweat, you get thirsty, tired, and dehydrated.
Yeah, you're welcome. We're back. Um, our lines are buzzing. Please remember, so many people want to ask questions, so don't let's waste any time. Uh, make sure you're in a quiet place. Switch off the radio. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to have a new policy now on this program. If from the moment we pick your call, we, we see that you have violated some of the ground rules, we won't be doing any, any explaining. we just move on to the next caller. But for today, please just say good morning and go. Let me tell you, every caller has a minute. So when you, see, when you say good morning, my name is this, I want to contribute, that's why you called. Skip all that and go straight to your point. Okay? So let's try that again. Good morning. Who's there? Hello. Good morning, Uncle Jimmy. Morning, Ma. How are you? Virginia, King George Pasola. Yes. Good morning, Madam. Um, I, my name is Olaizu. I would love to ask an um, engineer a question. And my question is, for vehicles outside Lagos, like Abuja, ah, Botafo, ah. Delta, ah, ah. how do, and, and they have registered their vehicles with Lagos, Very good question. How they bring down Fantastic question. Lagos? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> That's a good question. So, if you live in other states, but you have registered your vehicle in... In those states. In those states. Look, you are coming to visit Lagos State. You have your vehicular documentation intact and valid. You can come in at any given time. Those documentation are valid in the 36 states in the Federation. There is no issue with that. Even there is no issue with the camera. You can come in and go out and do whatever you like, so long as your documentation on the vehicle is complete and valid. Right. So what it means is that um, if you have Ogun State docu documentation, yes, it, it doesn't matter. You're subject to the same. Okay. So there is a clarification on that. Let me let me uh, announce the clarification. If you have Ogun State documentation, your documentation should say you live in Ogun State. Yeah. Okay, the, the yes. But nine times out of ten, what you get is some, I didn't say a lot, some Lagos State resident will not go to Ogun State to procure documentation because of the price difference. That is not allowed. That is against the law, and we will enforce that on you. Okay, now let's, let's, let's break that down. Yes. Um, I have a vehicle... Uh, I live, I could, uh, where is the Ogun State? I let's say Ota. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or a cherry, yes. some part of cherry. How, you say that I must show proof that that's where I live. Yes. How do I do that? Okay, so when you come and register your vehicle, you have your address that you're supposed to indicate. So as long as I have an Ogun State address, I'm fine. If your address shows Ogun State and is verifiable, then there's no problem. That, that, that's what the law... I, I didn't say that's what the law says. I think that the, the madam's question stems from the fact that some people... You know, Ogun State don't have the same MOT policy. They should. That we have. They should, but I don't think they do. They will. Eventually, yes, but for now. Well, we have a we have a cordial relationship, and I think those issues are gray areas that we can it's look at. It's not cordial relationship; it's what the law says. Yeah, no. In terms of you know, sometimes law can say something, and then you have to educate the people on what the law says. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them mm -hmm. don't know, and we will educate them as time goes on. But some of them do it intentionally because of whatever gain they want to make. Let, let me let me ask you: um, in terms of corrupt practices, yes, which it's common to all agencies anyway. Yes, it is. How far have you been able to put some control on that? Um, in this particular instance, uh, it will be extremely, I'm not saying it's impossible, it will mm. be extremely difficult. I'm giving it a 97% rate for you to contravene that system. You mean that if a, if a VIO stops me, I cannot roger him? You can roger him. But so you be, know what Roger is? Uh, I, I, of course, uh, I, <laughs> you, no, you can Roger him, but yeah. it, it'll be of no use to you because he can't do anything to help you in terms of that. So you are just giving whoever it is free money. Oh, oh, okay, look, he, he stops me for whatever it is and then lets me go. So, so. That doesn't change your situation. It still stays the same on the record. I see. I see. It doesn't change your so situation. So you, you I better just see it through. It's, yes, it doesn't change your situation. Have they allowed the discretion to tell you to go and sin no more? 
Absolutely, but it depends on the situation. Let me let me tell you something. Let's mm-hmm. let, let's be um, on the yeah on the same page. Now, it is not everything that is a fine or an apprehension. Now that also depends on how you approach an officer, how you the mannerism you use, even the mannerism the officer uses for you. It's a two way thing. If you are being confrontational. Mm, I don't think you will win that fight. But to my feet, by let's see. No, I did, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, you know, you know, because sometimes I have been, I have been involved in altercations between citizens and residents and officers mm. where the attitude of the resident is appalling in the in the sense that the the look on the officer is that who are you? You're just a are just a common officer. Don't you know who I am? Do, exactly. And, and that, that's a wrong approach. At yes. that point, he doesn't want to know who you are because mm. he is enforcing under the laws that Mr. Uh, Legal State has administered. Yeah. So it's irrelevant who you are. I know. I understand all that. I just wanted to. I, I wonder how you handle political pressure, though. Uh, it comes with its own. <laughs> it comes with its own. Yes, <laughs> but we do, we do it. We do it. It's, it's one of those things you can't shy away from. Yes. Um, likewise, the, the approach matters a lot. I'm not going to bend the rules or break the rules for anybody, but there are certain ways to do things. I can assist in mitigating or um, correcting a wrong in you know in a process. In a process. Yes. Okay. Look at the lines. Hello. Morning. Hello. Hello. That's the kind of one. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, m- yeah, money. Get back from Lekki. No, he's calling a female on his line. Uh, he got... How do you know he's not... How do you know he's not a female? He's a man. How do you know he's a man? <laughs> Did I not call a, a man woman yesterday? Let Mr. Gabriel See, talk. Let's take another man. Yeah. Okay. Another Hello? Uh, let's take another one. Okay. Hello? Good morning. Mo- morning. Yes, please. I would like to quickly ask Angel Fashola. What happened in a case of a car that is registered in Lagos, they moved to other states and they still need to renew it? Do so they need to bring the car for inspection in Lagos? Thank you. Okay, so you did not complete that. You registered in Lagos, you moved to another state. Do you, are you coming back to Lagos State? See, if you are coming back to Lagos State, you can renew when you come back and just yeah. don't let your documentation expire. If you've moved to another state permanently, now, see, the correct thing for you to do is to re-register in that state. That's what the law says. The MOT. The, the, or the, the vehicle the, registration. The vehicle registration. Everything should be trans- Really? Yes, absolutely. You know that, Mr. Disu. I don't know. Yeah, wait, hold on a second. Wherever you... You keep saying I know that. You, <laughs> wherever you move to a different jurisdiction, they need to have a register of that vehicle in that jurisdiction. I honestly didn't know. What I do know, though, yes. uh, because I, I had years back, I moved to another location when I was going to get the next vehicle license. Yes. I just went to their own, to their, to their own office and, and did that. And if they have an MOT, you go register for the MOT there. Absolutely. So when you move to another state and you're supposed to do that, but a lot of people don't do that, maybe for what you just said now, mm. they don't know. But that, that is the normal procedure. The law gives you three months to change. Really? Yes, three months to change your residency if you are permanently resided there. Mm. But good to go. Uh, vehicle license and roadworthiness certificate is a national thing. So we, uh, what we are doing in Lagos State, there are affiliates in, I think, about 26 states. So you can actually do the test in those states. Yeah, We can recommend or tell you where the locations are. You do the test. All you need is a signal that you passed, and then we issue you the certificate. Something occurred to me. The yeah. tests that you do, are they government set up workshops for that function, or are they private sector, uh, or a combination of the two? It's a combination of the two. So you do, but it looks as if you don't have enough centers in Lagos. Uh, that's an assumption. We do. You do. Uh, we do, and we will build more uh, to uh, other deprived. You, you, you don't want to partner with well-established garages. No, that is in the works as I'm speaking to you now. Aha, uh-huh, that's what yes, I wanted to that, hear. Yes. That, that is in the works so that we can have more capacity. Mm. Garages that have the capacity. Okay, so we look at two things. 
the capacity and the location. Because if your location is not conducive to testing vehicles, you're just going to form a traffic nuisance because of the tailback that will go on the street. So we don't want that. Okay, so lessons have taught us. Even some of our centers are in critical places that are not so conducive. We are looking at that to correct that. So going forward, um, we are partnering with other garages that have specialty in those aspects, and we will mm-hmm. license them to take up that matter. That, that, that would be more than welcome. Yes. That would be more than welcome. Our lines are still buzzing. They won't let you go. Messages here. Thanks. Oh, I, thought, yeah. I, w- I thought you were going to ask me a question. Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you give it? On the, uh, okay. Um, my own question. I have two. Yes. Uh, let me ask the first part, which is about motorbikes. Okay. Are they covered in in this as well? And um, how how what's what's their compliance level like? Motorbikes don't form a big issue for vehicle inspection right now, but they are covered under. It is not the primary content because motorbikes don't um, constitute traffic breakdowns. As I'm speaking to you, it is vehicles that do that. So, but yes, they are part of it, and they do come for testing. Hmm. Are motorbikes you, you, you registered? Yes, they are. Hmm. Those ones that I see. Go on. Mm. You don't feel that there is need to have a database of them because this is what we're talking about now, database. But, but we have a database of them. Okay, oh. so every, well, every, <laughs> every legitimately obtained motorbike that is under a company name, hmm. It has to be under a company name. We have very few that are under personal names. It's, it's a personal bike. Yeah. Are registered. We have a register for them. We issue them a certificate of compliance, and they go about their way. So most of the courier bikes, I'm not talking about Okadas. Mm-hmm. Most of the courier bikes are registered. A lot of the Okadas, too. Leave me, leave me. Leave a me. lot of the Okadas, too, yeah. are registered. Mm. But majority of them are not. I'm I'm particularly concerned about the Okadas. Okay. Like, um, do we have a database of the Okadas? And yes, we do. Are you sure about yes, that? Yes, but it is not under vehicle inspection services. It's under um, uh, PTCS, which is not the name escapes me. Who, who public transport and community services? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm I'm concerned about their safety on the road yes. because. Um, uh, I don't see why they shouldn't be taken seriously as regards inspection on our roads. Most of them don't have traffic aiders. Most of them don't have registration number on them. Yeah. Um, the drivers are not well trained. Well, but are, um, dri- are the drivers licensed anyway? Yes, they are. Amazing. I, I, I doubt that. Why Amazing. would you doubt that? I seriously doubt w- what, that. What is your doubt based on? B- because I know the kind of people that ride or cars. But that doesn't mean that they are not documented because you know them doesn't mean they're not documented i, I think they're not uh, well that's a that's a false assumption i can tell you that no are, are you mr fashola are you trying to, to engineer fashola so i can use all the necessary titles yes are you trying to convince me that all those urchins no, I, 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 I seriously i seriously hold doubt on. that don't get me wrong i did not say all of them i said majority of them that are under a company Logo are registered. No, we're not talking about mm-hmm. those. We're talking, we're talking about, about Okada. 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 Yes, for the most part, yes, they are. Uh, they are. I, 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 seriously, on, I seriously hold doubt on. that. You cannot seriously doubt that because you're not in a position to do that. Okay, so it's an assumption. I, I use them. I, when was the last time you, you rode on Okada? I don't bike? ride Okadas. Exactly. So I, I use them regularly. Yeah, okay, so so I know the kind of people that how, carry how, me. How many have you used? That's the point. That is the question, how many have you used? And okay. have you yes, asked sir. them to show you their documentation? This is a battle. You, no, you, not, cannot, you, no, have to, you have to see somebody. Yeah. To know that whether that person is, is educated enough to even know that they have to get registered. But that's an assumption on your part. Let me tell you fact, yeah? yeah? Every Okada that you see on the road mm. is coming from a local government. And if he's coming from any local government, they will register him. So I asked you a question earlier yes. about them riding on Lagos Road. Yes. Which you already answered that if they are working here, yes. if they reside here, yes. they need to register here. Yes. That's why I'm asking that question whether yeah. we have them we do. in Lagos we as do. registered we do. road users. We do. We do. And you said that they are licensed as well. Yes, they are. All right. Let me come before. My second question. Let's Sorry. Me ask uh, this question. Yeah, still on the first <laughs> so, Yeah, okay, this is on. just my f- first question. You said something earlier that, that really I'm not comfortable with okay. about, about uh, aesthetics of downfall yes. drivers that you're just concerned about minimum safety standards. Yes. And I'm wondering how is 
aesthetics not part of minimum safety standards when you see a very rickety downfall and you think that is not a health risk to other road users i i, I have entered into a downfall before and just stepping off the downfall and the the iron the body just tore off my 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 jeans not even trousers of normal trousers of pants Jeans Excuse cut me. through my skin. Yes, I mean, how how does that not? Did you wear pants on that? Day? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! It, it, it's a it's a it's a viable it's a viable question you asked, and I will answer you yeah. if you had listened to me carefully in the beginning when I was talking about that. There are level of aesthetics that I'm willing or that we are willing to accept. There are mm. other levels that we are not. Okay, so if you go by aesthetics alone. We will take all of them off the road, and you will not have any transport to enter. If it constitutes danger, isn't that to some emotional blackmail? No, no, that's not. That, that, no, that's no, not. It's, it's not because actually, actually, um, if it's going to put the life of other people at risk, then take them off the road. We'll, Trust me, we'll be if because we are we we are we have politicians who care about their future in office yes. than the people themselves are supposed to govern over. If we put the lives of people first. The people themselves that are supposed to go into this business will take the business very seriously and not compromise because we're compromised on the policy level. That's why we have all these rickety bosses on the road. No, I, I don't agree with that statement. Okay. We're not compromising on the policy level. Okay, so compromising on aesthetics is something that is not comparable to safety standards. Okay, so... That what you had on an unfortunate incident where an iron tore your pants. Well, a jeans. A jeans. Yeah. <laughs> what I said was there is a level of aesthetics that we are willing to overlook because it does not constitute a safety concern at the moment. But if you also listen, I said the Lagos State policy in terms of transport going forward will look to... Um, eliminate all those aspects that is not conducive to our environment but it'll take time and we are audaciously walking towards that mm -hmm. now if we key into mr governor's uh transport policy you've seen the buses what we're trying to bring on board yes, I have. Mm -hmm. they, they will they will we will get there uh, it's not an overnight success story that's going to happen the way you want it but it's going to be a strategic move, which doesn't also compromise the uh, comfort and uh, accessibility to the residents. Because the same you that's in front of me now mm -hmm. saying that, oh, yeah, take all the downfall buses, on, you will still be the same one that will come and say, I don't have transport to get around in certain areas. But you have to educate and compromise in certain levels, not to the point where you endanger citizens' lives, but to give relief and reduce the pressure on the system. Oh, okay, all right. I got a round up here. Uh, there's a last question I'd like to ask. Well, last, yeah, 949. Um, is there a time lag within which citizens will be given the leeway to tidy up their MOT? Okay, beautiful. Yes. So initially when we started, uh, you had a 30-day window to, you know, from the time you registered to bring your car for inspection. Mm -hmm. So seeing the influx of vehicles that are crowding the centers, we've mm. increased that from 30 to 60. Yeah, okay. a 60 day window. The 60 days ends when? Oh, from, end, from the day? You, you okay, what about overall from when you would then, because some people are, are, are they're reluctant to register now because they don't know when, you know, they, they, they seem to, they have a perception that they might not be able to get the test done. And so in in total, when would strict compliance now be be, be, be taken into consideration? After the sixty day window, because yes. when we by increasing the sixty day window, we've given surmountable amount of time for you to get those yes. things in order. Yes. I I think that's a fair uh, that's a fair time lag to you know to allocate to residents for them to take care of the yeah. Problem. Because in any case, some residents if you give them a year. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> you, you, you on oh, point. Oh, okay. Uh, let me take one more call. Oh, yeah. Look at the lines. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Good morning. Morning. Who's calling, man? My question today, Monday, is how about those people whose um, um, this thing has not expired? 
Which How, thing? What will happen to them? They are, they are, sorry, sir. Oh, could you be? Uh, this pastor, like they, they, they are road roadness, Abi. It's, road it's a good yes. question. You are not required to come to the centers until your roadworthiness is about to expire. So we are not looking for people that have valid and current roadworthiness. Road this see. is just people that their roadworthiness are due for renewal. Mm. Aha! That's, that's that, this is what this is where yeah. we should have started yeah, actually. We, I, I be, that's that's a very important I'll point. It, it, it is not everybody mm. that we are looking for. If your roadworthiness certificate is about to expire, please come and get your. Uh, new one and get tested. If it hasn't expired, go about your merry business. Ah, I'm a show. <laughs> thank you. <very> <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, thank you very much, thank Mr. you, sir. Mr. Fashionalized with <laughs> Like, so you, I, you, I think you, you need to bring me on your programs so I can clarify for some of your other listeners, you know, issues that come up. We'd be glad to partner with yes, you on please. that. You know, there's no, there's no point in keeping ideas or complaints to yourself where the, the, the listening party and the mm -hmm. doing party are not in sync. Mm. No, we do that. We, I promise you that we'll invite you from time. And I, I, I promise you also I will show up when you ask for it. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, but we don't have... Uh, is there a number people can call? Now... Do you have that here? I, I can give you a number, but don't call me. Text message me. I cannot take everybody's call and the question but if you text me I will respond well, to that you. is your number. My number. Is there an official number that people can call to lay complaints? Okay, so going back to that, the official number is not for one uh person alone. If you go to the website, each of the zones has a telephone, a telephone number, number that is peculiar to that oh, zone. Okay. So okay, you will okay. see that on there. Okay, so we don't need to spare no. you. No. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. You probably have about four phones. Anyway, we've got to go. <laughs> no, I only have one. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to go. It's been nice having you. Thank uh, you very much. Unfortunately, look at that. Lines are I gone. can see it. I can see it. Yes, uh, so we'll bring you in from time to time. Please do. Honesty, because it's quite... Um, it's quite quite uh, necessary. That's where we'll end uh, today. We'll be back again tomorrow, 9 o'clock. On Saturday, which is just two days away, we are going to continue from where we left on this um, exorbitant school fees. And I'm bringing in... Rhoda will come back, and then I think we'll bring in one or two proprietors so that we can continue this exercise. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Ultimately, we'll also be glad, I'll arrange with the, the Commissioner for Information okay. to bring in Mrs. Adefisayo, who we all respect, who is the Commissioner for Education, and put a seal on it. Until then, enjoy yourselves. Don't go away. The Tekkers are here. No, well, Teke 2 will probably show up any minute from now. Teke 1 will be rushing in at the last moment. And even Teke 3, my own favorite party at home. Sheriff, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Now, the, the, that... Uh, you didn't tell us whether on the day your jeans got torn. Where, whether uh, it was yeah, one of What those. do you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow at nine. Bye. <laughs>